Whether you're a rookie investor just starting your journey out of the rat race, or you've been investing for years, every investor needs direction, motivation, and a few key secrets, which I'll be sharing today. All of my mentors and the successful investors I've interviewed on Millennial Money, they know and practice these key secrets. And these secrets also apply for any kind of listener tuning in today. I know I usually talk to real estate investors and entrepreneurs, but this also applies to anyone in any field of investing, really. After today's show, your investments are going to perform so much better if you actually implement everything we talk about. You'll learn to exercise leverage and make wise investments. So throughout today's episode, take the time to really understand how each secret or strategy applies to your own investments. I'm your host, Alexandra gonzalez Ganoza, and this is where your financial freedom begins. Okay, so today as I talk to you guys, I want you to start thinking about how each secret applies to you. And don't disregard any of them because you think that they might be too hard or too simple. Um, I want you guys to force yourselves to actually make it applicable to you so that you can see the changes that start to happen after the show. These secrets are actually proven strategies. Implement them and hold yourself accountable when you actually practice them. You'll see the difference this show makes for you and how your success increases. So secret number one, you need to know your game plan and your outcome. There are two types of investors, the educated investor and the successful investor. Educated investors understand how to do deals, but successful investors also know why. Successful investors not only understand the mechanics of a deal, but also how each fits into their own strategy. Without a plan, you'll have a varied portfolio, but it's not going to go anywhere this way. It's like, when you go grocery shopping without a list and you might find great deals, coupons, and, you know, end up spending half off on groceries, but you leave and you have nothing for dinner, right? And you might find avocados half off. That's great, but you won't be able to meal prep and stay on track for your fitness goals. You have to think long-term. And so you have to know why you're making a deal or investment. Your financial education here is key. Because if you dabble in aimless opportunities, or as Robert calls them, shiny objects, this will only lead you to an unfruitful portfolio that doesn't let you achieve your dream or your financial dreams. To be a successful investor, you have to know your objective and how you're going to reach it. So today, make an investment portfolio that outlines the specific instruments you're going to use so you can reach certain dollar targets over time. So many people neglect the proper planning because they're impatient and I get it. So am I am very impatient. I'm a quick start. But of course, putting this plan together takes the time, effort and education you need. And that also means that if you put in that work, it will most likely be more successful than if you weren't to. So I'm going to ask you a common sense question here. Do you think it's wise to have goals and strategies to achieve your financial goals? Because if the answer is yes, then you need to start making your investment portfolio outline today. (laughs) Secret number two, be agile. When you start implementing your plans in real life, in the real world, you'll notice that you need to make some changes to that plan. And that's okay. That's going to happen to everybody. This doesn't reflect poorly on your plans. It's just the reality of how quickly the world adapts. And so you need to adapt faster. You have to alter your approach at the same pace or faster. Flexibility is key when you're trying to increase your cash flow. And to be agile basically means being fast enough to seize opportunities that come your way while simultaneously having the resources needed to make it happen. In the world of money, agility isn't just speed. It's about quickly grabbing those golden opportunities and having the resources on hand to make it happen. That's why preparation is so important, guys. Because if you take too long to make a decision because you're asking your friends and your colleagues and advisors and researching, then you can miss out on a great investment opportunity. This is what we call analysis paralysis. And while it's always important to do your due diligence, like we've always emphasized on the show, 
you also need to be prepared for this opportunity and be quick about it. Agility is when you combine speed and assets into one dynamic skill set, the skill set that allows you to pinpoint the right time and the right opportunity. And this is what will let you capitalize on the right financial opportunities when they come your way. Secret number three, work on your investing business, not in it. This is something that Kim Kiyosaki actually taught me herself when I was starting my second business. But this also applies when it comes to your investing portfolio. When you're so closely involved with all your investments, you can get a little too focused or hyper fixated on specifics, right? And you're going to lose sight of the big picture. You have to take the time to work on your business rather than always being busy in it because it lets you gain and learn valuable new perspectives. Whether you're listening to this show and you invest in stocks, commodities, or real estate, treat your portfolio like a business. Think about your investments with a strategic mindset and keep tabs on your overall bottom line so you can figure out ways to make your investing more successful. And you might be too focused on the two or three properties you have, which congratulations if you do, but the whole point is always three red houses, one green hotel. So how do you leverage what you already have? How do you keep growing and expanding your investments? This you do by having your CEO days. So the days I work on my business instead of in them, I actually call them CEO days. And it's literally marked on my calendar that way. And there's a really important step you need to um, work on on your CEO days, which is creating systems, right? Systems manage and sometimes even automate the different aspects of your investment venture. And this could be through, I don't know, things like software or outsourcing a VA to do it. So for instance, an investor in real estate could make a website to automate how they advertise properties and capture data from potential um, buyers and renters. Another example for me is that while I was looking for my first investment property, I used an Excel sheet that my sister created that factors in all the expenses of a property. And so I would use this to plug in all my numbers of any potential investment to see if it would cash flow and how much the cash flow would be, right? How much my expenses would be, how much my income was, everything. And this Excel sheet is now a tool for my literal entire family. And we use it when we want to make sure we're investing in a good deal. And it helps because it runs things like the numbers quickly. So this Excel sheet has literally saved us hundreds of hours because obviously when you're evaluating a hundred properly properties manually, well, that takes, you know, time. And now because we automated this part of the process, we've had more time to evaluate even more deals. And so it's important to start implementing things like that or seeing what areas in the investing business that you have can be automated, right? Or can just be, I don't know, outsourced. And something else to think about is doing things like counseling, um, sorry, cons consulting legal counsel for advice for setting up the best entity for you, right? To make sure that you and all your other assets are protected if you were to ever get sued. And for example, on CEO days, a stock market investor would set up processes that help them closely monitor their investments. So they're following their plans rules like never risking more than 3% of their portfolio in a single position. So working on your business lets you identify techniques that aren't yielding results and that could be holding you back. So this is really important because there's certain strategies that could, you know, generate amazing results right away, but they can gradually start to diminish over time. And if you don't look further ahead, investments, you know, can be forgotten about and then you end up using your capital that could have been used to either change your investments um, projections or been put to better use. Um, and then that's not a situation you want to be in, of course. Like, for example, me personally, you know, I'll be very transparent. I had an Airbnb that was doing amazingly well. I got excited. I got comfortable. Um, but honestly, the market had changed a bit. And um, thankfully, thanks to my CEO days, um, well, not just one of them, but thanks to many CEO days that I took, I conducted an analysis with another amazing Excel sheet that my sister had created for me because she's literally a genius with Excel sheets. And I realized, realized that the returns had diminished 
you know, quite a bit. I mean, I was still in the positive, but it was still a significant hit. And it was, and because of this analysis, I realized it was so much better to just switch to long-term. And I was able to get ahead of the curve before everyone else started putting their properties up for long-term. And I got exactly the terms I wanted from an amazing tenant, still positive cash flow, less turn turnover, and less upkeep and maintenance expenses. So I'm thankful I made this switch right on time because if not, my asset would have become a liability. And that's why working on your business and not in it is so important. So now secret number four, be aware of your blind spots, guys. It can be really hard to recognize a bad habit that's hindering your progress. And obviously, if there was an easy way to identify these blind spots, we'd make the effort to change it, right? But sometimes we avoid auditing ourselves or we don't care to actively examine what we could potentially be doing wrong because we get lazy and no, you know, no one wants to audit themselves or see, hey, what could I be doing better? Um, and especially, you know, after experiencing some level of, of success, like I told you guys before, you know, we're a little less willing to think something could be off or you know, ask others for their advice because we think everything's fine. Um, and I've learned so much when I discuss my successes, failures, and pain points with other investors, my family, friends, um, obviously friends who are experienced with investing. Um, and some of my best strategies are pivot plans. When, <laughs> when I think of the word pivot, I think of the TV show Friends. And it's like, when Ross starts yelling, pivot, pivot, pivot. Um, and that scene is so funny because it basically summarizes the life of an entrepreneur. But basically, my best pivot plans um, have come out of these conversations. And like I've always told you guys, it's great to get educated online. But going to an actual in-person event lets you network with other people that are doing what you do. And it's the perfect place to talk about your strengths and weaknesses because everybody else is doing. And then you can talk about what's going on in your investment portfolio and learn about theirs and what they're um, predicting and what strategies they're implementing and what worked for them and what didn't. So being in rooms like these could save you thousands of dollars. And it, I know it's like a, an investment upfront, right? You have to pay your ticket, your flight, your hotel, your expenses. But in the long run, having access to this knowledge, like saves you a lot of money. And it saves you from making a lot of mistakes that could be really pricey. And you're surrounded by experienced investors that have already made these mistakes for you. So having access to someone else's life experiences and, you know, the mistakes that they've made is literally priceless. So if you've been on edge about attending a certain event, do it. And something to keep in mind is when you're accepting or evaluating feedback or even sharing your story leave your emotions out of it. Like, you know, we've always said it's all in the numbers. You know, if you, if you want to be successful in business, I know that there's an aspect of intuition to it and your emotions and whatnot, but you really do have to practice not getting emotional about or like defensive when you're getting feedback, right? Because sometimes we can get defensive since it's something so personal and we're talking about basically our numbers and, you know, our talents and how smart we are. But you have to keep your ego out of your finances, honestly. Think of it as just implementing a new approach. And also, not everyone's opinion is applicable, nor should you apply it right away. Obviously, consider the source it's coming from and take that into account. Um, take into account their accomplishments, their knowledge, um, and their experience related to your unique situation. Because, you know, you're not going to ask someone random for investing advice. <laughs> and then secret number five, be confident and humble. You have to be confident enough to diversify your investments, but also humble enough to know when you could be doing better, right? Because we all could be doing better always. And so if you don't diversify your investments, you'll keep getting the same returns over and over again. And obviously, Stability in investments is what we all want, right? It's really nice to have that comfortable aspect of it. But sometimes we can get too comfortable with this. But when you push yourself past your comfort zone, there's so much potential to just keep increasing and increasing your returns. 
And I know believing in yourself sounds cliche, but guys, in our world, it plays such an important role because you have to be confident that all of your financial education and everything you've studied is guiding you towards the right decision to a more profitable portfolio. So believe in yourself and evaluate honestly both what you know and most importantly, what you need to learn. And it's not always about looking for the next deal. It's also about taking the time to reflect on your progress up until this point, up until this very day, everything you've accomplished, right? And that's something that personally really helps me. Um, it helps me with my confidence. It helps me remember who I am, what I've been able to achieve and why I'm knowledgeable enough to go into this, this deal, right? Or why I'm knowledgeable enough to start this business or take on a new client. So you have to constantly remind yourself of these things. I, I honestly even write them down because that's where your confidence comes from. Um, and that's how you'll be able to, because when, when we start investing, right, it's a leap of faith. And so knowing that you're confident in yourself gives you the motivation to take that leap of faith. And there's a reason you have to know that there's a reason why you're being presented these opportunities and with your financial education, you'll be able to make the right choice. So just trust that aspect of it. But of course, prepare yourself enough to be confident. <laughs> and as you start to go through those, you know, archive files in your head and, your inv and you start inventorying your process, your, oh, sorry, progress from where you started to where you are now, you're going to quickly realize that the next level of investing is not some exclusive club you don't have access to, but, it, but that it's actually the next chapter in your investing story. It's not about having all the answers before you begin, because that's literally impossible. It's about taking the first step. And you're never going to be prepared for absolutely everything, right? And that goes for everything in life. But honestly, like I have the perfect example, right? I would have never imagined that my guest bathroom toilet would have caused a mini flood just like probably a month within after closing. And so I had a huge plumbing problem, guys. Um, and obviously no plumbing knowledge because, I mean, look at me. I have no plumbing knowledge at all. But I was forced into a situation to think on my feet. And honestly, because of this, I started to think about, you know, future things that I probably wouldn't know or need to need to outsource or um, contract someone. And because of this, I was able to build a team and I have even like three backup teams in case one of them can't show up. So, you know, when you're forced out of your comfort zone, like a toilet flooding your apartment, you're going to always find a solution and you have to trust that too, because you and I, you know, whoever's listening, all the listeners out there, we're entrepreneurs, we're investors. And if there's one talent that we have, it's being able to push ourselves out of our comfort zone, comfort zone and always finding a solution. And guys, it doesn't take a genius to become successful in investing, right? We, we know that. What it takes is dedication and discipline to study your investments. The most successful people I know when it comes to investing are not like these book smart geniuses. They're people like me and you that just have motivation to achieve financial freedom. Some of the horror stories you've heard from failed investments are people who reaped the rewards of a thriving economy without any continuing education. And then they crashed hard once their luck ran out. But I know this can be intimidating, but don't let it intimidate you. Like, it's unfortunate that this happened to them, but don't let this influence how you go about your investing, right? And the thoughts that can start to occur before you invest in a deal. Because just before the housing market imploded, there were a lot of unskilled investors who made easy money in the expanding markets. And so bankruptcy courts, of course, were filled with those who didn't do their due diligence or keep up with their financial education. And in investing, luck is created through skill, knowledge, commitment, and a careful choice of your advisors. So for every beginner or expert listening, remember the five secrets we talked about today. Know your game plan. Be quick. Have your CEO days and work on your business. Be aware of your blind spots and play the delicate dance between being confident and being humble. Start implementing these like secrets that we shared today 
and you'll see your returns increase at a much higher rate, I promise you. And again, remember, no matter how hard or how easy it may seem, still force yourself to find a way to apply it to your situation because I promise you will see a change. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in for this episode. Please give this show five stars. Leave me your thoughts in the reviews or comments and subscribe to our channel so we can keep growing together. All right, everyone. Bye. Take care. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.